you can see that it doesn't affect the thickness. It's also important to remember that when you're working with these style commands, each individual line can have its own commands. Now that may be useful for you in some of the designs you're trying to work with, but most often we find out that people will try to select all three of these at once by maybe doing a, a group select or holding down their shift key, but that does not apply. When you're working with our label designer, each individual text line, you have to apply these features separately to each line. So what I wanted to show you there was when we tried to apply bold, it did not have any serious effect to this font family. However, if I switch to a different font family, in this case I'm switching to Perpetua MT Tiling, you can see Perpetua MT Tiling does allow for bolding. Notice the difference there when I turn on the bold off and on. And that's a big difference. You can see it up in your preview window as well. It's changing it from that thinner uh, definitely very, very thin on this side of the M to making it very, very thick, nice and, uh, and really loud. And that may be exactly what you're looking for in your design. So remember that different fonts are going to react differently with these command buttons. Well, let's move on. I'm going to talk about these other commands as well. And the rule of thumb about whether they'll work or they won't work is very dependent on which font you've selected. Let's switch mom and dad back to using the modern number 20 font. And I'm going to resize again just to get that back up to where it was before. About 40. I think we had it even larger than that. There we go. Okay. So even though it still says that the bold is turned on, it's not affecting the modern number 20 font. We'll just go ahead and turn that off for now. I want to show you, though, that some of these other commands will still work very well with just about any font family. And in this case, mom and dad, we can go to underline. That works well we can underline any of the other lines of text if we wish. Now we've also got next is the drop shadow command. Now drop shadow is really nice. It gives us some separation of our text lines from our background. Let's start with happy anniversary and apply that. Then mom and dad. And then love Aaron and Cody. And as you can see you're getting this nice separation. This is this real soft gray shadow that appears behind your line of text and it really helps to pull watch when I turn it off again it really helps to pull that line of text away from the background I'll do it again for you here you go I encourage you to try these out but remember if you start to apply some of these different uh, style commands to your lines of text it's good to try to be consistent across all three of these lines of text so what I'm talking about in that case is we weren't going to use the bold, remember, is that take a look, select them each, and see that you'll see that that red drop shadow, the red on the command button is staying red. See that? It stays red there for happy anniversary. It stays red there for mom and dad. It stays red there for love, Aaron, and Cody. This is really helpful because some of your designs may have some grays in the background. You may have some an image that's got a complicated background, and you may forget to turn on the drop shadow feature. Okay, so I've changed this font away from modern number 20 to Mistral just so I can show you, give you a good demonstration of the bevel and emboss button here, this command. And what it's going to do is it's going to put a highlight on the left side of the font face and it's going to kind of put a shadow towards the bottom right side of the font face. And this gives the visual, uh, this gives us a visual implication that the lettering is being lifted off the page, much like you've seen on business cards and you've seen it in uh, formal invitations or where they'll put stamps. Um, it's kind of like looking at a wax stamp um, on a invitation or a formal document. It generally is exactly what it says it is. It's that embossed, pressed in look. There's different styles of embossing, but let's, let me show you. So you can see that this white highlight goes across the top and it literally looks like this is almost like wax lifted off the page. It's very nice in certain cases. It depends on how you want to present your text, but we could almost use it here. I could try changing this font to, let's go up here and try uh, Cornet. Uh, we are a little too big at 66. Let's pull it down to 54. Happy anniversary mom and dad. We can't use bolding there. That's as thick as Cornette gets. So as you can see, 
this beveling and embossing on Coronet doesn't really do very much to help the font. It doesn't lift it off the page any differently. Yeah, I can turn it off and you really can't tell the difference. Um, you can experiment with these different fonts though, and I do recommend you do. Try some different fonts out. Try some of these different effects. Drop Shadow does work. Again, Underline you probably wouldn't want to use. Bolding doesn't work, as I mentioned a second ago. It bolds it here in the preview, but the Coronet font does not allow bolding. Even though it's bolding it in the preview here, it's not changing it in the preview window. Well, we've chosen Copperplate Gothic. It's a very nice formal serif font face. Um, we've got some other ones here. Let's try Bradley Hand. See the bolding doesn't work on that one either. Book Antiqua. Bolding does work. So we've made it thicker and as you make these fonts thicker and move it back into position there, watch what happens when I apply the emboss. You can actually see the embossing working and the thicker the font the better this embossing command is going to work. Let's turn off the bold, turn off the emboss. Let's go back to our font face of modern number 20. It's down here. These are all alphabetized. It makes it easier. And we have that a little bit larger. Let's go to 44. Mom and Dad. We'll apply the center. We'll apply the center here because we've been moving these all around. I've got everything turned off here. I don't have any drop shadow underlining or bolding. Uh, let's go ahead though. I do like this drop shadow effect and we want to make sure and touch each line of text and apply that drop shadow. We're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, now I wanted to talk to you really quickly about this rotate command down here below. It's below styling and uh, of course new text and image and background. Resize, remember, is dedicated to working with images. We haven't gotten into those really yet. But rotate will allow you to... It, it rotate is not going to work on images. It, it really is designed to rotate lines of text. Okay, so we make sure that our centering button is turned off and when we go to rotate a line of text I'm just going to click repeatedly or you can left click and hold down this rotate left and I'm going to move Love, Aaron, and Cody to where it is vertically positioned instead of horizontally positioned. You might not use this very often but it is available to you. It, it operates in a kind of unusual plane and therefore you if you start on this left side before you do the rotating you can only take, see I can only move this line of text so far to the right so if I rotated left or right there are some limitations and therefore uh, you can still use your sizing and let's pull this down so say you wanted to maybe like put a signature of who designed the label or maybe just a little side note or something like that it comes in handy for those purposes it's probably not going to get used that often in your design work, but I just wanted to make sure you're aware of that is what the rotate command is available for. I wanted to point out to you that it's really important to remember that when working with lines of text, you are really limited to just one line of text at a time. There is no paragraphing or wrapping of text to a second line. There's no returning to a second line. So if you're used to typing a on a word processor like Microsoft Word, um, and you come in and you, you start to type and you get to this point where you want to hit enter and start another line of text. That feature is not available in the label designer. The label designer is only going to allow you to work with one line of text at a time. So if you had to create three lines of text, we just go ahead and slide this up, this line, Love, Aaron, and Cody. And we'll go ahead and create one more text box here and another text box. We'll pull it down. Let's go ahead and change our font so that we match. We can touch Love, Aaron, and Cody and see all our properties for this line of text. We've got the drop shadow selected. We've got the 6-6 six, six and four zeros. We've sized it 24. And we're using Times New Roman. So we'll switch this line of text to Times New Roman. Quickly size it up to 24. We'll select that 6-6 six, six and four zeros and apply the drop shadow. And I'm going to do the same thing for this new line of text here. one more to 24 and six six and four zeros okay so I'll lift these up I'll worry about centering them here in a second and let's just change the text up here in our text field box to love it, Aaron and Cody and your friends at
there isn't at this present time in the label designer any way to really space these evenly. You do have to rely on your eye to do that, but as you can see, it's not too bad. That's fairly evenly spaced, and we can pretty easily create more space between these lines of text, or we can just drag them closer to each other if we want. So I did want to make you aware of the limitation in the software designer that we don't have wrapping and uh, you really can't type in a paragraph format. But as you can see, it's not too hard to line up three lines of text. And you have to use your eye. You can center on the horizontal axis there, but you really can't do anything to space these lines of text out evenly on the vertical axis. So you just have to use your eyes, but it's not too bad. Take a second. I can see really quickly something I pointed out to you earlier. The drop shadow wasn't turned on at Hattonfields. And now we've got all three of our new lines of text in that paragraph format there, and they all carry that drop shadow along with mom and dad and happy anniversary above, and we are ready to move on.